You may remember I've drawn on my bullet journals in the past, back in 2018, again in 2019, and then there was the one I did last year, which I kind of hate. <laughs> Even the camera doesn't like it. It's all blown out. I don't understand. <laughs> I do like that it had like a clear plastic sheet that I was able to use Posca's on, but I don't know. The colors just ended up so off, as you can see, and it doesn't really look like it goes with the rest of the set. And that's because it wasn't a tan book like the previous two books were. And I'll give you two seconds to guess what my solution for this year's was was Yep, I bought the old book again. Unfortunately though, the new books I found, they don't sell them in a bullet journal option anymore. So I'm going with the grid. We'll see if that bugs the crap out of me or not, but I just remember how happy I was to get out my bullet journal each and every day when there was an illustration on the front that just made me happy. So I'm willing to accept a grid journal over a bullet journal if I can have that again. But I'll let you know next year what my real thoughts are once I've like experienced it. So that's my plan for today. We're going to create an illustration that I'm proud of and can display on my desk for the next 365 days or so without having to like scream into the abyss that I want to retry. <laughs> I also did a little bit of research and watched my own video back again. And I figured out exactly which markers I used in the past illustrations so that they were gonna be spot on. We'll see how much surface I cover. <laughs> we have the front and back cover, the back pocket, and then the inside cover. That's all nice, blank, and inviting, so we'll see what happens. But the first things first, I can't just jump onto it. If I really want it to turn out well, I gotta start with some thumbnails. This is my sketchbook. I actually did use markers on the cover of this sketchbook too, so that's the kind of results I'm hoping for and expecting. That was this year, so I got a little bit of practice in. <laughs> So it's that like same paper covered cardboardy stuff that like the cover of books are. I don't know what that's called, but I really like drawing on it. So you can tell I'm kind of excited. Starting off with a pink Coleraise colored pencil. I got to plan out the composition before I like jump into the actual cover. So this allows me to experiment without having to commit, which happens to be one of my philosophies. <laughs> this box I've drawn, it just gives me a rough shape to symbolize the shape of the cover. So I can kind of see just where everything is actually going to lay out. I really loved the stack of books idea from the last two designs so I'm including that as well as obviously the character who's been featured in all three of them already and while I have drawn the same character on every single book she's supposed to be I think I've described it like she's very smart studious and trendy so I do tweak the outfit a little bit every time I mean <laughs> look at the low-rise jeans from the first book like that's not gonna do we're in 2022 so while the composition is very important, so is the character design for this one, since I am kind of not necessarily starting from scratch, but you know, growing from that and making some alterations. So in this little illustration, thumbnail thingy, <laughs> I'm drawing her sitting down. So I'm kind of doing double duty. I'm trying a slightly different pose from like the first thumbnail while also focusing on the outfit and seeing how that would look in this pose. I wasn't really sold on it. <laughs> so I drew more of a T pose next. Well, I mean, it's like, it's the waffles. T pose, which is more like a soft letter I. I went a little crazy this time and drew her from behind. And the reason for this was I had an idea for a dress with this like big bow on the back. And I've seen these around all year on the internet. I don't know if I've actually seen someone wear them. It's like a midi ruffle dress with like short ruffle sleeves. And then, then that like big bow that ties in the back. This I was liking, so I switched to markers. Being sure to use the same ones from the previous illustrations so that, you know, we can maintain that color scheme. My Copic uh, marker, uh, I think it's Rose Mid. It was a bit dried out and I knew I was gonna need a lot of this. So I just did a little side quest and refilled her. I actually bought 95% of my Copic markers secondhand. And while like it was economical and I don't regret it, it kind of has cost me more in the long run, like rebuying nibs and buying refills just because a lot of the markers that I did buy were already very low when I first got them. And if you let a dried out marker kind of sit there too long, the nib gets all crunchy and nasty and it'll, it just it's never gonna be the same so i've had to change a lot of nibs and if you have to change a chisel nib it's not that big a deal they're kind of like priced appropriately i guess but when a brush nib goes bad it's it's like the price of a whole nother marker for three brush nibs so yeah anyway little tangent there thank you for letting me get that out <laughs> but like i forget it all as soon as i get to use a brand new full marker with a new nib like nothing beats it well actually if you've ever bought a brand new copic marker that's a pretty similar feeling. But bringing to life a dead marker, I mean, that's kind of priceless though, right? I did take a pink acrylic pen and drew in the stripes on her dress. Every one of the girl's outfit 
so far has had at least like some hint of stripes somewhere. So I wanted to continue that theme. I think it's all about like trying to make something look like a set means you have to reuse things while also not copying things exactly. And this was me trying to do that. The stripes didn't end up super obvious, but I think once I start sketching on the toned cover, everything's gonna like look a lot darker because right now I'm drawing on white. That's gonna be on toned paper. Things are going to look different since you is wearing a dress, there really wasn't too much to the outfit. So after that, I just added in all the other colors that I'd already picked out and well, this is how that looked. Did end up having to fill another marker that needed it. That was a disaster. I'm now part Shrek. Get out of me swamp. Anyway, <laughs> a little rubbing alcohol went a long way. Now it just looks like I really love eating pesto with my hands, which I guess is an improvement. Added some white Posca to make the stripes really pop and I experimented with that. Not entirely sold, but we'll see. <laughs> I really love the stripey outfit though. And I, I wasn't really ready to draw on the cover yet. So I don't sign it and draw it again. So this time I drew her from the front, tried out like a heart shaped purse. At this point, I started thinking about her like as a character and what her story might be. Like she's been on my covers for a few years. Is she still going to school? Did she graduate? I always imagined she was top of her class in grades and fashion sense. So like, what is she doing now? Maybe she doesn't carry around a backpack anymore. And maybe now, she has a purse. I don't know. That's kind of when I had the idea of her maybe on her evening commute, tired from working her butt off all day at her corporate job. So I sketched in like this background of maybe like a subway, you know, not the restaurant, obvi. And once I had like a background, I sketched her into the scene. Had her like leaning up against her bag and her adorable outfit, half asleep, kind of ready for her power nap at home before hitting up like some place that serves expensive cheese with her girlfriends, you know? That might not have been what what I went with, but I really made, like it really helped me kind of fall in love with her more. And I think, like think of her as an individual and not just a drawing, which I mean, she still is a drawing, but like now I've got more feels. I decided that like the subway thing, you know, not the restaurant idea was just like too far a stretch from like the previous designs because the background is just so different. So I thought, well, why don't I just try something that's much more similar to the other compositions. And this really inspired me a lot more. I think just because it's not such a giant leap. I decided that this was the winner. I know it's simpler and maybe less exciting, but it was more exciting to me. The only thing I really changed was I decided to flip the design so that she's facing towards the right side, which is something I have also done for all the previous designs. As you see, the reason for this is so that the character faces the direction you need to like move your hand to be able to open the book or turn the page, let's say. I don't think this is like necessary by any means, but I don't know. I just think it kind of makes sense. And now it is finally time to draw on the cover. Again, starting with the Colorace pencil, I placed all of the most important elements of the design onto the sketchbook, being careful to draw as lightly as possible so that I can erase if need be. It did need be. <laughs> I did decide that it wasn't quite right and it did take me two more tries. You can see this first one was just far too high and her bun literally crossed the boundary of the top of the book. So I erased that and then I redrew it lower. The second time I accidentally drew her too far to the right for my liking. So it was back to the eraser to them. On my third attempt though, I decided not to start with like the stack of books like I had with the previous two sketches, but instead place the character first and then add the books later. That way I could focus on making sure the most important part was placed exactly where I wanted it to be, which happens to be the girl, not the books. Somehow this, she just turned out a little stiffer than previous attempts, but I do end up realizing that a little bit later and fix it. But for now I was happy and I started adding in a lot more details details like to the face and the sleeves and starting to darken my lines and finally like committing to it, you know? You might also notice that I am like consistently picking up the book and looking directly at it. This is to avoid any kind of distortion of the anatomy based on my angle of viewing. This has just burned me too many times. I'm smarter and wiser now. So if you've noticed that like you tend to draw characters with heads a bit larger than you wanted and legs a little shorter than you were expecting and you never notice it until you've finished the drawing and you're looking at it and you're like, what's wrong? You might just be looking at it from an extreme angle while you're drawing. So take a peek here and there and see. At this point is when I looked back in the sketchbook and realized she just, the old one seemed really relaxed and soft, whereas this new version was much more, you know, 
stiff. <laughs> so I ended up erasing the legs and I tried to give them a more like leany vibe. I also put like the closer leg further out so she's like mildly like kicking, you know, as you do when you're reading books. I shaded the other leg to make it look further in the distance, which I think made a big difference. Now I was just about happy with everything but the face. Something just I don't know, it wasn't quite right there. I wasn't sure, so I redrew it a few times with less and less luck each time. Almost all of the faces I would consider acceptable, but I still just had this like chip on my shoulder from last year's bullet journal, and you know, I was just like, I'm looking for perfection. At least, I don't know, I just want to be happy with this, okay? So I wasn't gonna like give up while I felt like I could still do better, which is why I'm erasing the entire head right now. And then here it is, this is the head I deemed good enough to satisfy me. I did just do a few little tweaks and Voila. The sketch is finally done. I definitely spent the most time of the entire project just sketching her, but it's so important to get that right before you start doing the stuff that you can't erase. So it was all time well spent. So now I can safely and comfortably and confidently start the line art. I'm using a 0.5 millimeter Pigma Micron and I'm going around all of the best parts of the sketch. Left a little space for the glasses because I hadn't decided just how I was gonna do that part yet. But everything else, it just came to down to tracing the best bit. This is a little different than sketching for me because I actually feel each minute passing by. It's not quite as an enjoyable experience. Specifically, adding the line art for the books, it was just... <laughs> way more tedious than I expected. It was the only part of this process where my brain just said, I don't know if I wanna. But I stuck through it. Not to mention like the more books I drew, the more excited I got to be done with them instead of like tired out from drawing them, which is saying something like, that definitely doesn't mean the same thing. The camera cut out during this moment, but I eventually realized that I had forgotten to include her backpack. I think it was like because of all that purse backpack confusion. So I just kind of like sketched one in quickly on the top of the books. The placement was limited because I was already done with everything else. <laughs> See, even spending forever on a sketch, you're probably still gonna mess something up. So why would you stop sketching when you can still see the things that you know are wrong, right? But now the line art is officially done. I did go over the entire illustration with an eraser and just erased all of the visible pink pencil. This did end up removing a little bit of line art, which when you like erase really hard, it's gonna do. <laughs> but I did end up adding more line art where I needed it at the end like after the color, so it wasn't a huge deal. And then this is where I realized that I had used the wrong skin tone for my sketch. I had chalked it up to it being on white paper, but it was actually the wrong marker. <laughs> so then I proceeded to spend entirely too long looking for the correct marker, which I still to this point have not located. I think it's called light suntan. I use it for almost every illustration, so I have no idea where it is. Like it can't have gone far or maybe it escaped. <laughs> I ignored that mystery for a bit and used dark suntan to color in the hair before using one of the barley beiges to color in the skin. It was the closest similar color that I had, so I kind of just had to go with it. I ended up using rose mist as the blush color, just like in previous bullet journals. I had a lot of fun coloring in the face. I mean, I always do. And it was extra like exciting to kind of try and keep in mind that there were glasses there and imagine what like the reflections would look like and how that would impact the color. I used a light green to add some dimension mention to the hair, which is also something I have done in previous bullet journals. Once all the flesh was done, <laughs> I went back to the rose mist color and colored in her bow and oh, the entirety of her dress, you know, ruffles and all. I did give that a good couple layers. These books are quite absorbent compared to some papers that you'll use markers on. So it tends to absorb a lot of ink and does require quite a few coats. Then to add the design to the dress, I used my pink Posca pen and added in all of the stripes. I had fun deciding like which areas of the fabric would have stripes facing maybe in different directions. So I took my time with that, but not before I got distracted and added in some shines to her glasses with a smaller white Posca pen. I decided that was a bit too much. And then I tried to subdue it with some line art, thought that was still too bright. Went over some of the Posca with like a skin toned Copic marker. Then I <laughs> added some shading to all of like the white elements of the illustration, like the pages of the book. And I used this like pale lilac color for that. Colored in the backpack with the green that exploded on me earlier, if you remember. I haven't forgotten. I added some details to the backpack with the rose mist, and then I used some white Posca for like the binding on the edges of the backpack. And then finally, <laughs> I jumped back to adding in the stripes. 
on the dress. Looking back at previous years of bullet journals, this new one, her skin just seemed too light. So I ended up layering over it with a similar Ohu marker that I found, which kind of made it too dark and more similar to like the dress tone. So then <laughs> I ended up getting another darker pink Ohu and layering that over the areas on the dress that had no stripes, just to kind of like deepen them and pull them further away from the skin tone. In some places, I actually accidentally layered over the stripes, but I thought that looked really cool. So when it came to the bottom ruffle, I didn't really feel like just coloring in the spaces between the lines and I just kind of like <laughs> went over it completely. I decided that looked good. And so I went over the entire dress with the new pink color, which um, if you're wondering is called pastel rose. Happy with that, I jumped into the task of coloring in all of the books, which I did this with similar colors, but not so similar that they all looked like the same book. You know, we don't want that. She's not reading the same book over and over again. She's got a whole library to consume. So some are yellow, there's some pink, even a couple green ones. And then I just took the thin white Posca from earlier and added in some details to the pages of the books, kind of separating them from the toned paper. So now the toned paper kind of looks like the shadows and then the white Posca looks like the edge of the page, which I love. And I remember doing this in previous designs and always just kind of makes me a little happy. <laughs> I used the light purple again for some shading on the dress. Then I took a one millimeter fine liner and went around around the outside edges of all of the design. This is something that I've done for the previous bullet journals. So it's kind of just, you know, maintaining the theme. I did want to circle behind her just as some kind of abstract background. So I used a lid and I sketched a perfect circle around her face to kind of like point at it. Then I used a ruler and added perpendicular stripes all over the remaining background. I decided these were too thick. So then I wanted like half the thickness of the ruler. So I kind of eyeballed where the middle would be in one and then I added in another batch of lines. And then I just colored them in using the same color as previous years. So I colored them in green. I believe this is called olive green to be precise. I was very happy with that. So then I went around everything with the white Posca to make it pop. I mean, cause it's what I've done every other year. <laughs> Also added in some small bubbles to reference the previous designs as well. I like to make it different while also like recreating similar elements. It just makes me happy. I decided since her outfit was so pink, I didn't want to add a pink circle behind her like I had originally planned. Instead, I used a thicker white Posca and just kind of filled in the entire circle, which is really, really bright and crazy, but I don't know what else I would have done to be honest. <laughs> and that was pretty much it for the front cover, except I did take the pink Posca and add brighter pink stripes to the dress. I did this at the bottom hem and then the top sleeves and then around the neckline as just a little extra pop. And then I also added a couple of little buttons on the bodice. I really like this. I feel like it just makes the dress look more expensive. <laughs> I really like it. I kind of want it now. Anyway, <laughs> so the front cover is now just about complete as it's gonna be. I still have the back cover to do. As you can see from previous designs, this is usually simple, but kind of just reflects the background of the front cover. So I decided to do the same thing with this one. I continued the stripes from the front cover downwards diagonally onto the back cover using the same ruler. Then I just colored in every other stripe, making sure to follow a stripe that showed up on the front so that they, you know, lined up perfectly. I chose not to color in all of the stripes, even though I'd sketch them all in, but only the ones that actually showed up on the front cover. This took me a while to decide, but it's what I went with. Maybe I just didn't want to color in all the stripes. Who knows? And it just feels purposeful to me. I mean, maybe because I did it on purpose. Then I just had to erase the remaining lines so it did look complete. Otherwise it did look like I just skipped them. And then this is what that looked like. I was very happy with it and I didn't think it needed anything else, but I did get a slight urge to just add a singular stripe to the back pocket with a couple Posca bubbles, you know, to keep it company. Nothing too crazy, just a little attention. I almost never look at the pocket on the back. So I was like, I don't know, I don't really feel like doing too much back here, you know? And that was it. Here is my finished 2022 a bullet journal. Well, I guess it's a grid journal. <laughs> Welcome. But I won't hold that against it. I'm just so, 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 so much happier with this one than last year's. And it feels so good to finally redeem myself. I've been thinking about this all year. I mean, it's one thing if you like mess up an illustration, you know, you can just move on. It's another thing entirely to mess up on an illustration you will literally see every single day for at least a year. I mean, it motivates you to do better next time. And let me tell you, I almost didn't even post that video last year. That's like how unhappy I was with it. But the thing 
is. My channel isn't really about showcasing perfection. I mean, if it was, I don't know if I would ever be able to post. You know, art is a journey, a journey of things you're proud of and things you aren't so much. It's constantly learning and progressing. And that doesn't always mean that the last thing you drew was the best thing you drew. But that doesn't mean that the next thing you draw can't be your best yet. And that's something you can really only learn with time. Anyway, thank you guys for watching and sticking around my channel for all these years. I'm feeling very sentimental and grateful for you. So yeah, before I get too sappy, I hope you all have a delicious evening full of waffles. Bye!